Hi, I'm Courtney Nash. I'm an editor with O'Reilly, and I'm here today at the Strata Conference in New York with Dean Wampler and Jason Rutherland, uh, co-authors of Programming Hive. And we're here to talk today about Hive. So I'll, I'll start with you, Dean. What, what is Hive for people who don't know? Well, Hive is a SQL query tool for Hadoop. Uh, it's designed to support end users who are used to using relational databases, uh, would otherwise be unproductive in Hadoop because they'd have no way to, to work in the way they're used to. So it gives them that way of writing at qu uh, queries, asking questions of their data without having to master Java programming or all the other low-level tooling in the Hadoop ecosystem. And so with what drove you guys to write this book? You know, why, why yeah. write a book about Hive? Well, Sounds I'll pretty simple. Yeah, I'll start. Um, Actually, it was sort of a case of doing something in anger. That we just really needed good documentation. There just wasn't. No one else is writing a book. So I, I actually talked to uh, the editors at O'Reilly and said, look, we really ought to do with this book. Yeah. And I uh, got these guys to, uh, involved, and uh, that's how it got started. And how did you get roped into this? Yeah, I mean, Dean and I were working on a project, and uh, there was not enough documentation. So we just figured uh, people, people would have to go through the same pain as us, or we could help them out. Yeah. And it's very useful for data warehousing. So um, we wanted to create some good documentation on it. So when you talk about, um, you know, people want, it seems to me there's probably two audiences or two groups of people who'd be interested in this. I mean, you've got people who might already be working in Hadoop, but are having, folks are having a hard time maybe, you know, dealing with writing queries and dealing with all that. And then, you know, and you've also got people who are bringing in a relational database. They're looking to start up with, with Hadoop. Is that is that a, a fair assessment of who might be interested in Hive? Yeah, that's that's exactly correct. Uh, I mean, we, we we tried to go over the details of the link, the Hive QL language, yeah. and then also, and that's good for end users, and that's good for developers. Uh, and then we tried to go over the internals of Hive, so that's that's useful for anyone using it. So, talk, tell me a little bit more about the Hive QL language. I mean, right. well, it is a dialect it? of SQL, yeah. uh, and like all SQLs, it, it's not uh, it doesn't conform to any standard. Um, it's not a full database. That's important for people to understand. You can't do row-level updates, the inserts, that sort of thing. There's no transactions. It really does emphasize the queue and, and structured query language. It's very much about asking questions of your data. But to follow up on what Jason was saying, I, I'm on a personal mission to get Java developers to start using High because using the low-level Java API is, is very tedious. And, and even if you're willing to put up with a tedium, you're not going to spend the hours and hours engineering uh, optimized queries the way that the Hive team has. So it's just a better way to do most of your work, even if you're a developer, and you have all of these options for customizing file formats and data formats and yeah, wanna, where the data is stored and the whole bit. I want to come back to the customization in a second. I mean, one thing that I really liked in the book, I mean, it's, it's sort of the hello world of Hive, if you will, but you guys have mm -hmm. a word count example in there, and I think that the Java is like 63 lines or something like that, and the right. Hive example is is like seven, yeah. that, give or, give or yeah, take. Yeah, so it's it's much more concise, and word count is, is a simple thing to write in MapReduce. As soon as you try to write a join with sorting, it becomes extremely difficult, almost impossible for the average developer who isn't you know, doing that kind of Java programming in that API every day. So, and then, but then with the Hive query, it's you know maybe three or four lines and you're done. So it's it's just a, a win-win if you if you pick Hive, and and Pig is also very similar in this way of just doing a lot of the boilerplate for you, but at the same time giving you a lot of, of very high performance power behind the scenes. So um, yeah, I think developers should be using it, but certainly end users who are accustomed to working with data through you know SQL languages, for them it's also just a it's really a lifesaver. I think it's one of the most important tools in the ecosystem because without it, so many people would just be dead in the water, would not know what to do with the do, but it keeps them productive, and I think that's extremely important. So, you, I mean, you mentioned uh, developers would be interested in this. Is, is there any concern on in terms of developers about how much is sort of abstracted away? I mean, how much can you pull up the hood and see what's going on underneath? Yeah, yeah I mean, so Hive has... Uh, you, what's called the user-defined functions, those can be completely customized, so there's actually a, a lot of Java code that can be done and integrated right into Hive. It's designed for that, so uh, it's not really, it's, 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 it's SQL-like, but it's really a, a, using SQL to automate MapReduce tasks mm -hmm. and writing the MapReduce tasks that, I mean, doing the MapReduce parts that it automates is extremely useful and if not extremely tedious at the same time. And we're, would, would re normally require like maybe some research, and so they've taken like academic papers and different ways of optimizing a MapReduce pipeline, right. and made it, 
you know, run as, as, as fast as you really can. So uh, it's, uh, you know, I think it's, in that, in that regard, it's very powerful uh, for, given what it does. Um, I think it, it, the, the one thing is, it's just, uh, it just need, really needed better documentation. Yeah. And so, so if a developer wants to write custom, you know, sort of queries and tools for their specific business, that's, that's, where, that's where it's at for them. Yeah, they can easily write that stuff and they can write their own statistical functions. Um, if they want to port stuff from like SAS or something, then they can do that. So there's, you know, I think there's a lot of room for uh, developing their own uh, algorithms and things using Hive. Yeah. yeah. The other thing that's interesting about customization that I think is extremely powerful is even if you're not uh, able to get your data in a format that Hive already understands, it's very easy to add tools that can parse whatever your format is. So for example, when I teach Hive courses, which are available at thinkbig.com, uh, actually thinkbiganalytics.com, um, uh, we actually take some Twitter data that's in JavaScript object notation and, and plug in this device called a SIRD, which is a technical term for these things. And then we just start writing queries against this data that's in a completely weird format. So it's it's extremely powerful in that way to be flexible, um, to let you you know work with the data any way you want, but yet still be able to enable end users to write queries. And as far as the performance goes, obviously that's something developers always wonder about. You know, should I do this in Java to be fastest? Thank you for asking my question. You're yeah, doing my job for me. That's yeah, good. well, there was this uh, there was this study a few years ago where some uh, I think it was an academic team compared Hive and Pig and some other tools with native just Java MapReduce code, and Hive was always within a few percentage points of uh, performance. So it, it really is very very highly performant code. So I, I think it's just a win win for people to use it. And so speaking of using it, the last question I want to ask you guys is sort of what's the end user experience? You know, so the person who's used to using SQL or even a layer of abstraction away from that, you know, reports built on that, what, right. what's that like? Yeah, I'll start. Um, yeah, it's a bit rough around the edges right now. Uh, typically we teach classes using the command line interface, which means you log into a server and type commands. And it's not very nice if you're used to working in nice, rich graphical environments. Uh, the good news there is that uh, there's a lot of companies, including some that are here at Strata, that are working very hard to provide the same sort of uh, rich tooling that uh, end users are accustomed to. And, and so it's, it's a problem that's going away pretty quickly. But right now, it's, it's not going to be as good as uh, what you're used to with more mature tooling. But we will, and so as a result, what we find is a lot of companies will just treat Hadoop and Hive as part of their overall ecosystem where they're still working with traditional tools but using Hadoop and Hive to do the heavy lifting for stuff that the traditional tools can't handle in, in quite as a performant way. So this, uh, yeah, it's kind of a mixed picture but hopefully it's going to get a lot better pretty soon. Uh, I mean, yeah, we, we have a case study uh, done by Karmasphere, so they have a, a, a nice product. It's solely based around Hive, uh, so, and I think there's a few other products. Um, I think one, one direction we'll probably cover in a subsequent book uh, or in a revision of the book is like real time. So using Hive for real time analytics, that's probably an interesting direction. Cause pretty hot topic right now. Yeah. Typically people want to, uh, uh, they, they, they don't like the lag that MapReduce has. So uh, there's, there's ways to, to uh, make that go away, make the lag go away. And then it really is more like a relational data, complete relational database replacement. So we'll, we'll probably cover that uh, in the future. Cool. Well, great. It was great having you guys here today. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you.